This is a project that has started in the run-up for Rio a few years ago. We started to look at the impact of uh, food waste on um, the environment. The reason is that FAO has been working on uh, post-harvest losses for over 50 years with no results really. We know everything about the techniques to avoid post-harvest <laughs> losses and we still have a very high level of losses basically because it costs less to let things rot perhaps than invest in infrastructures and roads and so forth. And also at the producer level, especially at the retail level, you know, very often it's much more profitable sometimes to let food go to waste and, and have a new batch coming in. So uh, we thought in my program that uh, the economic cost of the food that is wasted maybe wasn't enough to take action. And we started evaluating the environmental cost of producing that food. So in 2011, the results of the total food uh, loss and waste in the world is 1.3 gigatons of food which is wasted. Translating this into natural resources impact, uh, this translates into 3.7 gigatons of CO2 emissions per year. So if waste were to be a country, it's like the third largest emitter in the world. It's huge. Um, the report quotes 3.3, actually, that was published in September. Now we re revised it to 3.7. Um, I don't have the time to go into methodological issues, but um, this is the number. When you look at the water impact of uh, food waste, it's 250 uh, um, cubic kilometers per year of water, which is, which is lost. That's enough water to meet the household needs in 2050 for the whole population of the Earth. It's a huge quantity also. In terms of land use, one third, 28% exactly actually, of the land which is used for producing food which never gets on the table, gets lost. And this is 1.5 billion hectares. And the same for biodiversity. The biodiversity quantification was much more difficult because it's difficult to mix apples and oranges. So we looked at uh, red species lists which are lost and the trophic index for fisheries. Now, when we look at the economic cost of this food waste, loss and waste, I would say, it's 750 billion US dollar per year which is lost. That's as much as the GDP of a country uh, like um, Saudi Arabia or even uh, Switzerland or Turkey, more or less. So it's a huge number. And when we published this in September, we were number one in the media in terms of coverage on how much money is lost on this. But it is nothing if we really put the factor in the environmental cost into that. Now, these are the producer costs, the 750 billion of 2009 uh, that we used. If you look at the trade cost, the market cost of the same food, it goes up to 920 billion US per year, which goes through the bin. Um, well, it's, it's a bit difficult uh, valuation here on the trading because not all food is traded. So I would say it's somewhere between 750 and 920 billion US. And still, it's a big number economically. Now, when we try to put the environmental cost on them, and you're the first ones to see these results, which still are to be published. First of all, I have this a bit complex uh, framework, but uh, I'm not going to explain everything about it. We have to be aware that food is lost at all stages of the food supply chain. And one important category also is the food services, canteens, public canteens, and so forth, it's not only in the household level. So if we are losing food, it means that we have to do, produce more food, we're creating more pressure in terms of land use. And this has boundaries, uh, questions in terms of food availability for people and planetary boundaries, and also in terms of managing that waste, the landfill is a concern in many countries. The impact on the environment, of course, are on all the natural resources that we have on climate change, but there is one aspect which is very important, it's natural resources scarcity, uh, which is all the energy, and we, we have been talking in the past and still have to talk about peak oil also, because all the cheap food we have now is subsidized by fossil fuel. Uh, the energy cost, phosphorus, nitrogen, and water, these are all resources that are scarce and increasingly scarce, so the pricing on, on this has to be different. The socioeconomic costs vary from incentives and subsidies for mitigation and all the public uh, investment into mitigating that cost uh, to labor demand, food prices that go up, health issues, um, uh, displacement of people in case of um, climate change, and other impacts. 
So we have tried to look at this framework in terms of the pillars of the sustainable livelihood approach, uh, in terms of what is important for well-being, you know, in terms of income and food security and so forth. So this is the framework for the full cost accounting we have. We haven't done all of it, but uh, we have tried uh, evaluating the economic, uh, the economic valuation of natural resources. Now, I don't have the time to go into the methodological issues, so I will run through them very quickly. We have used the social cost of carbon for looking at the carbon accounting. Um, of course, you have different studies. There's the Stern report that you all know, but there is a more recent report also. And, and the level of uh, coverage is different. You have it in these two squares, the blue one and the green one on the screen. And of course, as you go toward more social costs, you know, you have more uncertainties in the valuation and also in terms of uh, uh, also the surprises that come with natural resources damage in the future. So there's a lot of uncertainties in those figures. Um, so this gives you an idea about the complexity of the elements to be accounted for. So if we take these two major studies of Waldorf and um, Stern, and we quantify the uh, natural resources cost in terms of climate change of the waste that we have. We are somewhere between 55 billion and 315 billion US dollar per year, which is spent. Uh, we have a wi wide range, as you see, but this is the closest we could get. For water, we take also, again, this uh, amount of 250 square, kilometer, uh, square meters of water, which is wasted per year, and we look at the uh, consumption in irrigation uh, by plants. Uh, of course, we have different kind of uses of water. You have use value and non-use val <coughs> values. <coughs> non-use values are very difficult to evaluate. So the, the red is really where the study is trying to do now. <coughs> so you see that we are partly covering the whole cost, not everything. So in terms of monetization of the water use, we are depending on the uh, benefit transfer uh, figure we are using <coughs> between 0 0.5 to 250 billion US dollars for the water valuation, which is also huge. A re realistic estimate of this wide range is around between 10 and 50 billion for water. Of course, there are many open questions. I'm not going to go into the <coughs> methodological issues, but you know, What's the right price? How you, <coughs> I'm so sorry, <coughs> how you go about these valuations? Land use accounting is even more difficult. I mean, there are some methodologies, you know, that look at environmental services that the land is producing. We have done in our project, we have two indicators. One is land occupation and the other one is land degradation. And for us, the land degradation uh, aspect is very important because not uh, the status of the land that you have is going to you, give you different types of or levels of ecosystem services. And by the way, in ecosystem services, we have the regulating ecosystem services like uh, floods and water purification or whatever, but we also have provisioning. Provisioning is the <coughs> capacity to produce food. Huh? It's also an ecosystem service since the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment. So only by looking at land degradation, we have 10 to 130 billion US dollar in terms of land use. Uh, and again, for biodiversity, I see that Ken is up, so I have to go quickly. <laughs> um, biodiversity, we have used the, the indicators of the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, but most of them are subsumed under land or, or climate. In the case of invasive species, we don't have enough data sets to do any meaningful global evaluation, but we have done something on nitrogen nutrification and pollinators and so forth. So we have some cost here in terms of fishing um, uh, costs, which are lost, 50 billion, uh, nitrogen, uh, 20, and the loss of pollinator, 20, 25. So as you can see, it's very, very partial in terms of biodiversity and by no means complete. So only those partial evaluations, if I took the lowest and the highest uh, estimate that you have just seen, you can see that this doubles the amount of money which is lost with, through, uh, with food waste every year. And this is huge. Now, if we put all the costs, it would go to three, four times as much. And we haven't dealt with the health issues yet, only indirectly under climate change. So we have different um, uh, work ahead of us that we are working on this, uh, in these few months to, to continue, the, to, to refine and finish this, uh, this modeling and publish the results by March next year. Um, 
but in full cost accounting, we have different challenges. And this is where we need to collectively work together to improve those kind of costs for them to be credible. For example, double counting of impacts. You know, you look at health impact on climate change that we have in the normal valuation, but after, under other aspects, you know, you do have also uh, the same kind of impact. So how do you avoid double counting? The data availability is always a problem, of course, but how you do the benefit transfer also, there are different discount rates and so forth which are in discussion. Social costs we have talked about, but how you narrow these estimates you know, is also another uh, methodological issue that depends on the model you're using from mass flow that we have now into equilibrium model and maybe into fuzzy models in the future. So just to conclude, which is what I said before, uh, <laughs> The, uh, the, the, it's a huge cost of the uh, uh, food, food wastage that we have to really put on the table. And to put it on the table is uh, not to put it really in the food prices, but to allow better decision making by uh, businesses because you are going to have a surprise event that are going to inflate the price uh, and, and also in terms of policy making. So under this website, you have the uh, entry for this food loss and waste project. And as we do progress and we have results, it's all published on it. And there is a small video of th three minutes that I would invite you to look at. Thank you. <laughs>